Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk about energy production, uh, what it means to be an autotroph, what it means to be a heterotroph, what the differences are between producers and consumers, what are the different levels of consumers. The first thing we need to do when talking about energy production is talk about what a primary producer is. A primary producer is also called an autotroph, and autotrophs are self-feeding. So autotrophic is going to roughly translate to self-feeding, these are organisms that can capture energy from non-living sources and convert it into forms that living cells can use. What are the non-living sources of energy that they can use? Well, photoautotrophs, if we put photo in front of autotrophs, those are the autotrophs that use light. Photo is the prefix that means light. So our photoautotrophs are organisms that utilize photosynthesis to produce high energy compounds that cells can use. These would be uh, indicative of all the plants on the, the planet, okay? Primary producers are the first producers of energy-rich compounds that can be used later by other organisms. These high energy or energy-rich compounds are always carbohydrates. Glucose being one of three monosaccharides that can be produced via photosynthesis that will be linked over and over and over again to produce even bigger, more energy-rich compounds in the polysaccharides. A lot of the biochemistry stuff is coming later in the course. However, for now, just know that photosynthesis is the process by which photoautotrophs will utilize sunlight and carbon dioxide and turn them into high energy compounds that not only they can use, but also organisms that are classified as consumers can use as well. All life depends on primary producers. Primary producers are the base of every food chain and are therefore the base of every food web. Chemosynthesis, or the chemoautotrophs, are the other form of autotrophic organisms that will utilize a non-living compound in order to produce high-energy compounds that they can use and other organisms within their food chain can use as well. The difference between chemosynthesis and photosynthesis is that photosynthesis uses light as the non-living energy source. Chemosynthesis is going to use not light, but is going to use these hydrogen sulfide compounds in order to produce the sugars that not only they need but also organisms need that are supported by these particular producers. The chemosynthesizers are going to be organisms that live deep within the uh, ocean where light can't penetrate, so photosynthesis is out of the question. They have adapted themselves for life in these environments in order to provide themselves with energy utilizing a compound that is readily available, in this case hydrogen sulfide. So, what does it mean to be a consumer? Consumers are organisms that rely on other organisms for energy and nutrients. We are a consumer. Consumers must consume other organisms for energy. We call these consumers heterotrophs. The producers were called autotrophs. The consumers are called heterotrophs. Auto was the prefix for self. Trophic means feeding. And so, if we break into this word or break this word down, Hetero means others, so this is feeding on others. These heterotrophs must acquire energy from other organisms, usually by consumption, again, typically through predation. There are a variety of organisms on the planet that utilize heterotrophic food acquisition or heterotrophic nutrition as their main way of energy capture. This would be a tiger, obviously a rabbit, bear, vulture, earthworm, and fungus. If we go to, through all of these different organisms, they might look very similar. You might not have really thought about their mode of nutrition, but there are carnivores on the planet. The carnivores are going to uh, consume meat, exclusive form of energy capture. A uh, tiger would be an example of a carnivore. There are herbivores. Herbivores are going to feed exclusively on the primary producers, meaning they're going to feed on plants only. We have omnivores like the grizzly bear. Omnivores are going to eat both meat and plants. Scavenger, that is a meat eater, but is not a carnivore because carnivores are active predators, meaning they're going to actively prey on other meat sources. Scavengers are going to consume meat that has already been killed. Detritivore are organisms like earthworms that will consume slash absorb detritus, which is kind of the organic material that has leached into the soil from the breakdown of other organic compounds, usually through 
the saprotrophs and the decomposers. And then our decomposers are the organisms that are actively decomposing. Now what is the difference between a detritivore and a decomposer is that decomposers actively release enzymes for extracellular digestion so that they therefore can absorb the nutrients that are broken down by whatever it is they're decomposing. Detritivores are just the organisms that are not actively doing the decomposing but they are benefiting from the breakdown of the decomposing materials and are reaping the benefits of that decomposition. That's it for this short video. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Leave a question in the comment. See ya.